Um, so like Paul said, I've been with the U.S. Geological Survey now for uh, quite some time, since about um, 2006. I started as a student there. Um, and for a large part of that uh, time, uh, I've been involved with this project. We've gone out and uh, made water level measurements and uh, as Paul said, hundreds of wells across the greater Houston area. Um, and we um, uh, measure these wells and then present uh, an annual report on these water levels, their short-term and their long-term water level changes. Um, and we also monitor compaction in parts of um, Harris and Galveston counties and uh, even more recently in Fort Bend County. Um, and so we look at, you know, at what that relationship looks like between water level changes in the long term and uh, compaction and subsidence uh, in the subsurface and that land surface elevation. Uh, so tonight's presentation will be uh, on those water level altitudes, those long term and short term water level changes and some compaction uh, across Harris and Galveston counties. Sorry, a little bit of a lag here. Um, so, uh, so for this year, we had, um, this is gonna be about our 2023 water level map series. Um, and we measured these water levels in the Chico and Evangeline aquifers undifferentiated. For the purposes of this report, uh, we are not differentiating uh, wells in the Chico and Evangeline uh, aquifers. Uh, so so, so uh, starting, uh, I guess, two years ago, we combined the two. And so now we're presenting water level altitudes and, and, and changes in the Chico and Evangeline aquifers undifferentiated, uh, as well as the Jasper aquifer. So uh, we have what are current year water level altitudes for 2023. Then we'll look at one year and five year water level changes for each of the two aquifers. And then we'll be looking at long-term changes since 1990 and 1977 in the Chico and Evangeline. Uh, and then since uh, long-term changes since 2000 in the Jasper. Uh, and then again, as I mentioned, we have uh, compaction monitors, uh, and we'll look at a little bit of that data uh, toward the end of the end of the uh, presentation here. So in the map here, you can see these are just all of the wells that we were, uh, that we've measured across the region. Uh, this is a, a 13 county region covering most of the greater uh, Houston area. Um, just a little background here on uh, geology and hydrogeology. Um, we're looking here at a cross section, uh, and that cross section uh, cuts through portions of um, Grimes and, and, and Walker and Montgomery and, and Harris counties, all the way down to the coast in, in um, Galveston County. Um, and so that uh, uh, that cross section we're looking at here, you can see where we've got um, the undifferentiated chief one of Angela Aquifer. There is a uh, a line here which would delineate the base of the Chico aquifer. And again, for the purposes of these annual assessments, we're combining the two. Um, below the, the Chico and Evangeline, we've got this confining unit called the Burkeville confining unit here. Um, and that confining unit does uh, truly separate the uh, tension metric heads of the Jasper aquifer, that underlying Jasper aquifer from the above Chico and Evangeline. Um, so again, Combine these, the Chico and Evangeline for these regional scale assessments. Um, a few years back, there was an update to the uh, tops and the bases, the delineation of the tops and the bases to the, uh, uh, particularly to the Chico and Evangeline aquifers. Um, and so um, because of that change, we saw a, a, a large uh, difference in the thickness of the Chico aquifer across much of Southeast Harris County. Um, and that did change uh, what our historical network, uh, the, the spatial distribution of our historical network. So uh, many of the wells that previously were considered Evangeline wells uh, were then became Chico wells. Um, and so that was one of the reasons for uh, combining the network into you know, one single undifferentiated aquifer. And then here, uh, I've just got a highlighted box here across Montgomery County. Again, this is just a short section of um, uh, Southwest Montgomery County where this cross-section line is going through. Um, but just to give you a, a little bit of uh, 
uh, you know, just a little sense of what the thicknesses of these octopus units are uh, across you know, Montgomery County, at least within that particular area. So we can see that, um, you know, the Chico, Chico Nevansman can range uh, in thickness from 400 feet above NAB 88 datum uh, down to about 400 and even as much as 800 feet below datum. Uh, and then Jasper, Oxford, again, depending on sort of where you are, uh, but in this cross section, you can see that you know, Jasper can start somewhere around uh, six, 700 feet below uh, NAVD 88 or essentially uh, sea level, um, and maybe as much as, you know, as thick as, or, or the base of that Oxford unit uh, being as low as, you know, 2,000, 2,200 feet below, uh, below data. Um, so again, a little bit about our network. Uh, these uh, data are collected across 11 counties. I believe I said 13 counties earlier. Apologize for that. It's 11 counties. Um, and for, for this year, we collected, we began our data collection uh, in December, early part of December of 2022, and we continued that data collection through uh, about the middle of March of 2023. And this is a typical time frame when we're collecting this data. This is usually that time frame in which um, the aquifer system is under the least amount of stress. Um, you know, not as much use, not as much pumpage out of the well. So we get a little bit better sense of um, static conditions across the region during this time period. Most of our wells are made up of um, uh, municipal public supply wells, but we also do have a number of irrigation, industrial, and observation wells. Um, and for this year, we collected 500 or measurements in 512 wells screened in the Chico and Evangeline undifferentiated aquifer, and then 101 in the Jasper. Um, and then the number of wells that we used to create the uh, 2023 altitude maps, um, 479 of those 512 for the Chico and Evangeline, and uh, 98 uh, of those Jasper measurements were used to create the 2023 Jasper water level altitude. We'll be seeing those here shortly. Um, so first, uh, we'll start here with the Chief One Evangeline. Uh, this is, again, this is the 2023 water level altitude. So uh, when I say altitude, uh, we, we go out, we collect the measurements, and then we reference all of those measurements to a common datum, so NADD88, or essentially uh, sea level. So the uh, so the warmer colors, the, the, you know, the reds, the oranges, these are water level altitudes below datum, and the cooler colors in blue are altitudes above datum. So we see here you know, much of um, Harris County, uh, down into even most of Fort Bend, Brazoria County, Galveston County, we see a large area here where we see altitudes below datum. The, the, the darker oranges and reds, uh, we can see across a lot of, um, or a pretty large portion here of uh, Western Harris County, sort of central and Western Harris County, we've got altitudes in the range of 200, 250 feet below datum in this area. Um, and then as we start moving sort of north into Southern Montgomery County, you can see uh, you know, some smaller areas, more localized areas of altitudes uh, exceeding 250 feet below, below datum. And then as we start getting out into the uh, more up dip regions uh, towards you know, Waller Walker counties, uh, central and northern part of Harris counties, and out into San Jacinto County, we start seeing these um, positive water level altitudes, right? These altitudes above data. Um, and so in, in general, we can kind of pick out where we see a lot of the, uh, a lot more of the uh, water level, groundwater level usage across the, across the area. And this is kind of a you know, typical pattern that we've seen now for, for quite some time, um, particularly you know, out here in the western part of Harris County. Um, uh, you know, the, the Harris Galveston Subsidence District, they have uh, what they call three regulatory areas for Harris County, Harris and Galveston counties. Um, and so this is regulatory area three, um, which is the, uh, the area in which groundwater reduction plans didn't really start going into effect until 2010. Um, and so other, other parts of uh, Harris County, 
more central and to the east, uh, south and southeast. Um, uh, those areas have been under groundwater reduction plans now for quite some time. Uh, and so, it, and, and, and in general as well, these are sort of some of the areas that we've seen, you know, Western Harris County, Southern Montgomery County, we've seen a lot of um, development of those areas. Let's go ahead. Last, you know, 25, 30 plus years. Uh, so now we'll look at uh, one year water level changes. And um, so these are direct water level measurement um, uh, change pairs. Uh, so we've, uh, all of these wells, we've got 454 uh, wells where we've collected water level measurements both in 2022 and 2023. Um, so these are just direct changes in what we see. Uh, and again, you know, color, color wise here, we're see, seeing uh, declines as the warmer colors and rises as the cooler colors. Um, but almost across the board, we see uh, most of the water levels are uh, declines. Um, uh, many of the water levels is a fairly good delineation across uh, or from uh, sort of east and west of, of Highway 59. So as we see sort of east, uh, east of Highway 59, we're seeing water level declines, but most of those declines are sort of in that in the one to 10 foot range, um, a few a little bit more than that, but, but primarily in that one to 10 foot range. And then as we you know, get uh, west of 59, we see some much larger, uh, much larger declines over that one year period. Um, there are uh, some areas with some uh, significantly uh, larger declines, some of these areas as much as 40 uh, plus feet of decline over the one year period. That's pretty significant. I think that's reflective of uh, last summer. So last summer, just like this summer, was uh, a, you know a pretty hard, uh, pretty hard summer. It was really hot for quite a long time. We had a uh, pretty good drop going on, and so I think the uh, the water levels that we uh, measured in the winter time were reflective of that change. Um, so, so again, we kind of see that portions of Western Harris County, um, South Central Montgomery County. Uh, and even in you know, some parts of Port Bend, we see some of these darker reds, uh, darker red symbols here, which are uh, greater than 40 feet of decline. We had a few, really just two um, wells, which uh, showed a fairly significant amount of rise, one down here in Brazoria County, and then and we did have one well that showed uh, more than 20 feet of rise in Southern Montgomery County. So we'll compare that with five-year changes. And again, we kind of see a pretty similar, pretty similar pattern, pretty similar story here. Really, um, almost all of the water level changes are uh, declines. Um, uh, for uh, these five-year water level changes since 2018, uh, we had 420 water level measurement pairs, uh, almost all of them declines. Uh, and again, you know, 59 is a fairly good delineator where we see you know, sort of in the eastern part of uh, Harris County, down in the Brazoria and parts of Galveston County, we're still seeing declines, but most of those declines again in that sort of one to 10 foot range. And, you know, again, these are, these are areas which have been under uh, groundwater reduction plans now for quite some time and, and largely off of groundwater. Uh, but then as we start moving you know, north and west, we're still seeing a lot of groundwater usage. Uh, these are the areas where we're seeing a lot more of the more significant declines uh, across the area. And then um, this is just a more of a sort of numbers, uh, uh, stats look, a way to look at the last two slides. Um, and it's really just here to uh, just have these highlighted to show that, you know, again, for, for both the one and five year um, changes, um, you know, almost all of the changes occur in that uh, one or, or zero to 10 foot range. Um, and that's pretty typical. That's pretty typical what, for what we see um, most years. So um, in general, most of the changes occur within that range, but we do see uh, a fairly significant amount of declines, you know, almost 20% in the 10 to 20. So these are uh, 10 foot increments, uh, each of these bars. You know, so 20%, almost 20% in that 10 to 20 foot of decline over the one year period. Um, but as we look at the rises, we see a lot fewer 
rises. And so again, that just is just another way to look at the previous two slides is what we saw, not very many rises, almost all declines across the one and five year time period. So now we'll look at uh, long-term change. And this is long-term change since 1990 for the cheap or evangelin uh, undifferentiated offers. And so um, um, in, in this case here, what we're looking at is water level change. And so again, the blues here will represent rises and then the, the yellows and, and oranges and reds are representative of the declines. Um, and so we see that across a lot of Harris County, most of central and eastern Harris County down into um, uh, Galveston County, we see a lot of uh, water level rise since that time period. You know, Highway 6 is a fairly good delineator here. Um, most of, uh, again, almost all this area has seen some amount of rise. Uh, we've seen it, uh, you know, more than 160 feet of rise in, in smaller areas of central Harris County here. Um, and then as we start moving out west and north, that's when we start seeing these declines. Uh, again, Highway 6 is a fairly good delineator here of that. Uh, again, that kind of makes sense. Uh, those are, again, the areas that have not been under groundwater reduction plans uh, for nearly as long as most of the rest of Harris County, as well as, you know, areas where we've seen a lot more development um, during that time period. So we've got areas, um, we've got some areas here that are greater than 250 or greater than 200 feet of decline. We've got smaller localized areas, very small localized areas uh, in parts of southern um, uh, southern Montgomery County and northern Harris County <clears throat> that show as much as 280 feet uh, or a little bit more of uh, decline since that time period. So then we can compare that with changes since 1977. And again, we see a really pretty similar pattern here. Eastern Harris County, again, those areas being under groundwater reduction plans now since, uh, since about that time, since the late, late 70s. We see some pretty significant rises. Uh, we've got a, a, a relatively small area here of um, you know, rises of greater than 200 feet. Uh, and then as we start getting uh, towards the, the west of the study area and north, we do see some pretty large, uh, pretty large declines in excess of 300 feet. In some places, very small, uh, small localized areas in southern Montgomery County, have more than 360 feet of decline. Uh, within the Chico and Evangel Aquifer. So, uh, so that gives a pretty good sense of the uh, differences and the short and long-term changes. Um, you know, the, this past year, uh, the previous summer was pretty, um, you know, it was a hot summer, it was a lot of drought. There was you know, a lot of groundwater usage during the time. And uh, I think in the short term, those, um, uh, the, the water level usage is, is reflective in the winter time in our measurements. Um, so again, that's why we saw a lot of these declines during that short time, uh, short period. And, uh, and they do show up in these long-term uh, water level changes as well. Um, if you were to compare this long-term change map to last year's long-term change, so from 1977 to 2022, the, uh, the amount of rise in Eastern Harris County would have been a little bit less. Uh, and then conversely, the amount of declines in parts of Western Harris County and, and, and Southern Montgomery County, um, uh, you know, that, that um, those declines are actually greater this year compared to last year's long, longer term change maps. Um, so again, you know, these short term uh, fluctuations can have an effect on long term, but you know, ultimately we do need to be, um, you know, aware of, of what the long term uh, changes are across the region and how those, uh, in terms of what our interests are, uh, how those affect um, subsidence in the region. We'll, we'll look at a little bit more of that here later. So now we'll move on to the Jasper. This is the Jasper wild level altitude for 2023. Um, so again, looking here at uh, the reds are, are, are below datum, the blues are above datum. You can see there's quite a large area of um, Southern Montgomery County, Northern Harris County, uh, which these areas are you know, in excess of 200 feet below datum. And then as we start moving up, we start seeing 
uh, you know, these altitudes increasing. And then as we get to sort of northern Montgomery County, parts of um, Grimes County, San Jacinto County, we're still seeing these uh, water level altitudes above data. So general, general trend in the sort of north, northwest, southeast, down dip direction um, of uh, water level altitude steepening. And we've got a few Jasper wells here that may be a little difficult to see. Got one right here. Um, I did not shade these areas. These wells are um, you know, pretty distal from the, the majority of the Jasper well network. Um, so didn't shade those, but um, did include these, uh, these values. So um, this, the water level altitude at this well is 101. And then down in Fort Bend, uh, we've got a relatively new well, Jasper well, uh, yeah, just inside Fort Bend there, um, that is 32 feet. And then our um, uh, monitoring well, our Lake Houston monitoring well, it's just right at the south end of Lake Houston. Uh, that water level altitude is 34 feet below data. Then this is sort of a, a poor implementation about the, uh, of this, uh, of what I'm trying to show here. So I apologize for that, but I did just want to pull up last year's presentation. Um, and just as a quick comparison here, uh, this is, um, and I'll, I'll go back really quickly here. Again, this is 2023. And if I pull up, this is 2022. Um, just for a little bit of a, of a comparison um, to what we saw last year, um, you know, the pattern looks very similar uh, in general, but what, what we notice here is that the, uh, the lower altitudes here are you know, in the range of about, you know, 25 to 30 feet lower this year than they were last year. Um, and again, you know, that's kind of what we saw in those one-year changes for, for the wells in that area. Um, similarly, excuse me, similarly, um, the altitudes in the up dip portions uh, last year uh, were higher than they were last year, although we'll point out that uh, we had a, a few extra data points in the far north far northwest part of the study area than we did this year. Um, so it's a little bit, uh, not quite a, a perfect comparison there, uh, but in general, um, I think the altitudes do show that, uh, that they're lower this year than they were last year. If we just bring that back up again. And again, I mean, even these last two wells, um, you know, this year we're you know, about approximately four feet lower in this well. Um, you know, Let's see, that was almost 36. Actually, a little bit, uh, no, about another four feet lower at this level as well. All right, so uh, Jasper Wells, again, one year water level changes, 2022 to 2023. Um, we had 92 water level measurement pairs. Almost all of these were declines, about 93% of them were water level declines. Um, we had uh, some fairly significant declines, uh, particularly you know, here in Southern Montgomery County, even parts of Northern Harris County, um, and really uh, even a few in parts of you know, Central and Western Montgomery County here. Um, the largest declines, we had four that exceeded more than 40 feet of decline. There were four in uh, sort of Central Montgomery County. We had one here in the uh, Conroe area. And then we had uh, two relatively large uh, uh, rises of, of more than 20 feet uh, in the western part of Montgomery County. So again, primarily declines similar to what we saw for the Chicano Bandstream. Then we can compare that with five-year water level changes since 2018. Again, almost all declines. We have 83 water level measurement pairs here. Uh, about 92% of those were declines. We can see a, a fairly significant amount of decline in um, southern Montgomery County here, uh, even northern Harris County. We see some pretty significant declines. Um, and uh, really, a lot of these exceeded more than 40 feet of decline over that five year period. And then uh, we did have one in Grimes County out here that showed uh, more than 40 feet of decline as well. Then we did have also two or three wells here in blue that showed some uh, fairly significant rises uh, more than 20 feet there. But, but again, overall, uh, some fairly significant declines during that time period or during that five-year time period. And then uh, just to, uh, again, 
more of a numbers way of looking at the last uh, previous two slides. Um, as opposed to the Chico and Evangeline, uh, we actually, uh, you know, the majority of the changes were more than uh, zero to 10 foot, zero to 10 foot of branch. Um, we've actually got a, a larger distribution of declines, uh, even as much as you know, 40 feet, uh, and even, even for the five years, as much as 60 feet here. So that 50 to 60 foot range. So you can see that there's, you know, especially over the five year time period, we've got lots of, uh, lots of fairly significant decline during that time period and not much, uh, not much at all in terms of water level rises. And then looking at um, uh, long-term changes in the Jasper over um, uh, since, since 2000, over the time period since 2000. Um, and this is, again, this is sort of what we've been seeing now for quite some time. Uh, almost all declines across the region. In fact, we had uh, entirely all declines across this uh, entire, entire region here. So the darker reds here represent larger, larger amounts of decline. Uh, we've got a fairly large area here that covers um, uh, parts of northern, uh, or, excuse me, northern Harris County and southern Montgomery County in excess of 220 feet of decline during that time period. Uh, and then, so these are 20 foot increments uh, and then as we start moving up dip, we start seeing less and less decline, uh, but even in the northern, uh, sort of northern and northwest part of Montgomery County and even parts of uh, Grimes County, we see you know, declines as much as 20 feet. Um, so, uh, so again, you know, this is kind of a similar pattern to what we've seen for quite some time. And then uh, again, I apologize for the the poor implementation of this, but I just kind of wanted to put in a quick uh, screenshot of, of last year's long-term change in the Jasper. Um, again, pretty similar pattern here. The colors are slightly different, um, but but in terms of range, we can see that you know here we had areas that showed you know 180 to 200, and maybe in some areas 210 feet of decline, whereas uh, in sort of the the, the, the largest areas fine for this year, you know, almost reaching 240 feet in some, some areas, so 220 to 240 feet in those areas. And just a, a quick comparison there of, uh, of this year's long-term change versus last year's long-term change in the Jasper. So, uh, so that really concludes all the uh, water level data for the Chico Nevada and, and Casper. Um, and so I just have a couple of slides left here on compaction. Um, and so for those of you who might be you know, familiar with our, uh, our compaction and subsidence data uh, already, uh, we have 14 compaction monitors. These are exensometers. They're you know, essentially like uh, deep seated uh, benchmarks. Uh, so they have a, a variety of, of depths um, and the, we're measuring subsurface compaction um, within the interval of land surface elevation at, to the depth of the anchor, or excuse me, the anchor depth of that monitoring well or monitoring extensometer. Um, and so we've got 14 of these. They, unfortunately, we only have monitoring data uh, across Harris County, most of that in uh, so the so southern part of Harris County, we've got one now in Fort Bend County, and we have one in uh, Galveston County. Um, uh, you know, again, unfortunately, we don't have any other exensometers or, or, or compaction monitors in the rest of the study area. Um, uh, but for those of you who might be familiar, you may know that the Harris Galveston Subsidence District, uh, as well as U University of Houston, they have a fairly large network across the greater Houston area as well as in Montgomery County uh, of these um, uh, GPS units that monitor uh, subsidence. So um, we've got some uh, more recent data and, and greater coverage of these subsidence monitors uh, across the greater uh, Houston area. So if you have any interest there, they've got a great um, uh, in sort of interactive GIS website that shows uh, the raw data of those uh, GPS stations as well as the uh, five-year rates of subsidence at each of those monitors. So you can kind of you know, look at look through that if you have any interest uh, interest on that. Um, in terms of our compaction data, again, like I said, we have 
uh, 14 of these sites, uh, 14 of these exosometer monitoring um, locations. Uh, six of those monitor compaction in the Chico, uh, or so the Chico portion of the Chico and Evangeline aquifer. Uh, those are represented, uh, represented as these um, blue symbols. And then you have uh, the rest, uh, the other eight are monitoring compaction in both the Chico and Evangeline. So, so that anchor depth penetrates through the Chico and Evangeline. Um, in most cases, near at or near the base of the Evangeline. So we're monitoring compaction within that entire interval. Uh, and those are represented by these uh, red symbols. And then, um, so if you look on the uh, right-hand side of each of the names here, this, the, uh, these are the years in which the data uh, were uh, initially started, most of them starting you know, sort of in the, the early to mid 1970s. We've got a few uh, that began in 1980, and then our most recent one in Fort Bend County, Cinco Mud, um, beginning in 2017. And then the numbers here uh, to the right of each name, that is the total amount of cumulative compaction that we have recorded at each of those locations since the beginning, since 1973, or the, the beginning year of uh, data collection up through December of 2022. And then back to the map, um, there are a variety of symbol sizes here. The larger the symbol size, the, the, the greater amount of human compaction that we have recorded. And so our most, uh, you know, most recent compaction monitor at Cinco Mud, since 2017, we've recorded, um, 24 thousandths of a foot, 0 0.024 feet compaction at that location. Uh, and then in the next to Texas City, 0 0.092 feet uh, compaction there. Um, and then on the, the sort of opposite end of the spectrum um, at our addicts monitor, uh, coming up on four feet here, 3.820 feet of compaction there at that location since uh, 1974. So, um, and then, you know, all the rest of these, uh, rest of our compaction monitors have reported somewhere, <clears throat> somewhere between those ranges. So just to give a sense of long-term change. Now, what, uh, what's not really being shown here, this is just total cumulative compaction. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a great slide to show this, but um, what we've seen is that in this region, compaction has, uh, or rates of compaction at, at all of these monitors, uh, with the exception of Cinco Mud, since it hasn't been around for very long. Um, uh, but the rates of compaction at each of these monitors has slowed significantly um, since the time period of groundwater reductions. So when the Harris Galveston Subsidence District um, enacted their groundwater reduction plans, uh, began uh, reducing the amount of groundwater being used in particularly in area one, out here in uh, Galveston County and the uh, eastern and southern part of Harris County, uh, those began. Those uh, reduction plans began again in the late '70s, um, and, and has, has has persisted since then, uh, and largely off of groundwater. But what we saw is that there was a significant decline in the rate of, um, of compaction at each of those monitors in those locations, and then and then a little later. You have area two, which covers more of the central part of Paris County. Um, and again, you know, very soon after those uh, reduction plans were enacted, we started seeing a, a very significant um, a decline in the rates of those compaction, uh, or compaction rates at each of these places. Um, and then addicts, addicts is within that area three. Reduction plans didn't go in effect until about 2010. And, and, it, and again, uh, you know, compaction rates and water levels were reflective uh, of those reduction plans. So right around 2010, actually maybe slightly before, um, we started seeing a very significant um, uh, decline in the rate of compaction, whereas uh, addicts was really, prior to that time period, it was, it was seeing a really high rate of, of, of subsidence compaction. Um, and it's really largely the reason why we see uh, the most compaction there at that location. And then, um, so, here we're just looking at the one year, uh, one year changes, the amounts of compaction that were recorded from December 2021 to December 2022. All of our extensometers recorded some amount of compaction. That compaction ranged from 
uh, as little as one thousandth of a foot uh, to as much as um, 50 thousandths of a foot at our northeast location here. Um, uh, we can, in, in some years, what we do see is uh, uh, we will sometimes see expansion. So if we see uh, you know, some of these exensometers, water levels are within that elastic range of compaction. And so we can at times see uh, expansion in some of these, a small amount uh, of recovery or expansion. But for this year, almost or really all of our compaction monitors showed uh, some amount of loss of land surface elevation. Uh, most, of, uh, most of them are relatively small, uh, but as we see Northeast, Southwest, Attics, these, these three really showed the, the, the most, particularly at Attics and Southwest, these are areas that we've seen fairly significant amounts of uh, water level, groundwater level usage uh, in those areas, particularly again, over these you know, hot summers. So uh, maybe not so surprising that we see significant amounts of uh, compaction there. Now, you know, as we go forward, we may see a, a bit of a rebound in that, um, in that total amount of compaction. And then, um, and really that's all I have for compaction. I have just a few slides and these are just sort of rough plots that I kind of threw, threw together today uh, that I thought were kind of interesting. I wanted to look at um, a few uh, water levels these are water levels from three of our monitoring prosometers in Montgomery County. Um, these are continuous water levels that, we, that, that are reported and they're, they're um, published uh, uh, to the public as well. So anybody's welcome to, to, to go out and look at that data. <clears throat> but what I wanted to look at, what I was curious about was how much had water levels changed uh, you know, as a percentage uh, um, from the January of 2022 so beginning in January, 20, January of 2022, how much, what percentage or, or, or how much had these water levels um, either declined uh, or risen, or in this case, all, all three of these have declined since that time period. Um, so we've got in, in the blue trace here, these are water levels from our Lake Houston piezometer. Um, again, at the south, eight, uh, south end of Lake Houston, this, is, uh, this monitoring well is screened in the upper Jasper uh, the well depth is, is here, almost 2,600 feet. Um, and so what we see is that since January of 2022, we've had a decline of uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of about 7%. It's just been a, a, a steady, steady decline since that time period. And then uh, another one of our monitoring wells, this is a Chico well in New Caney. Uh, well depth here is about 600 feet. Uh, again, screened in the Chico, represented as the, the red line here. Um, and since January 22, January 2022, um, up through uh, today, actually, um, we've seen a, more than a 20% decline in that in the water level there. Um, so 20, you know, 22% roughly uh, for that well. And then our Needham um, piezometer monitoring well. This is an Evangeline well. It's represented by this green line. The well depth there is 807 feet. And that well has uh, uh, declined by as much as you know, 12, 13% roughly. So fairly significant um, uh, declines since that time period over the last you know, you know, year and a half or, or a little more, uh, which I thought was interesting. So I'm expecting to see that uh, this winter time we'll, we'll see um, uh, lower water levels than we saw even last year. Um, uh, we'll, we'll see what happens, but that's kind of what, I, what I'm expecting based on what I see here. So I think that'll be, those winter water levels will be reflective of um, the hard summer that we had this year. And then I just pulled this right off of our, our public um, webpage. Again, it's really just kind of showing what I just showed, but in a little different way. Um, this is uh, continuous water levels at our Lake Houston piezometer. Again, um, this is for the previous year. So September 28, 2022, up through today. Um, and so that is this darker blue line, but uh, the lighter blue line here is a comparison of what water levels look like for the previous year. So the same time, but previous year, September 21 through September 2022. Um, so again, we've just seen this sort of steady decline. Uh, you know, there's been roughly three, four feet, uh, a difference between um, last year's water level and this year's water levels at that well. And then similarly, Again, New Caney, that New Caney well. Same thing here, 
this is uh, last year, comparing last year's water levels to this year's water levels. So again, fairly significant declines um, during that time period. And then our uh, NEEDM monitoring well, uh, these are, again, this is this for the last year and then the same, um, same time period for the previous year. I find that interesting. I'm, I just like looking at that comparison. I think it's a much nicer graph <laughs> than I put together. Again, this is just on the public web page. Um, uh, you can just sort of type in USGS and, and get a posometer and, and this web page should pop up for you if you have any, have any interest in looking at that. Um, but with that, uh, that actually is, the, is all I've got. And uh, so I think Paul and others, if we have questions. Um, thank you so much. I said this, um, as usual, I forget how many years you've been doing this for us, but always appreciative of you and, and what USGS does day in and day out. So many other things than just this, but you know, with these, obviously these are of interest to us and USGS brings us the facts, then it's up to us to interpret and do what we will about it. I wanted to ask about, uh, about recharge areas and uh, outcropping like for example, I guess the Evangeline, assuming it's its own outcrop, but where those are and and uh, how long it takes for them to move. I mean, just the the point being, being where where they are, and and so that we understand where the outcrops are that allow rainwater and stormwater to enter the aquifer. Yeah, I don't, uh, unfortunately, I don't have a great um, uh, slide showing the delineation of those outcrops, but um, yeah, for, uh, so the Chico, Chico Evangeline, um, we actually, you know, roughly, I'll just try to trace it out um, with the uh, you know, pointer here, hopefully, hopefully you all can kind of see that, but it, it, it does, you know, kind of follow roughly along this line. Um, you know, not exact here. We do have in our published reports, you can look, uh, the figures will show those, uh, the delineations of those outcrop areas. Um, but, but, but again, roughly across this line. Um, so yeah, everything, you know, from here and, and sort of down dip toward the east, um, those, that is generally considered the outcrop area for the Chico Evangeline. So, um, but, um, but yeah, I mean, recharge takes quite a long time. Um, you know, the, the subsurface sediments here are you know, sandy, um, but also there's quite a lot of clay. And I'm sure anybody who's you know, dug around in their garden or put in a pool or anything like that in the yard, they'll, they'll know there's quite a lot of clay uh, across most of the region. And generally that clay content will increase as you move in a down dip direction toward the coast. Um, and so uh, any of the recharge that, that, that you know, hits as precipitation, it takes quite a long time um, for that, uh, for that water to reach the deeper parts of the aquifer system, um, and so a lot of the rebound that we've seen has, has been a, a result, really, of just the, the the reduction of groundwater usage over time. And um, so, so in general, so yeah, so that's so that's sort of generally the, the roughly the outcrop area for the Chico Evangeline, um, and then you've got uh, the up dip limit. For the um, Jasper, it's actually so it's actually further than what this map shows. It's further north than what this map shows here. Um, but uh, but, for, but so that would be the outcrop area. And maybe actually, if I go back to cross section here, it might show that a little bit slightly better. Yeah, there, there we go. Um, Actually, I, I was completely off. The, the outcrop area for the cheap on evangelist is, is up here. And again, hopefully you all can kind of see that. I know that's sort of small, um, but that cuts across Grimes County and even parts of uh, the northern part of Montgomery County. Um, and then this blue line here, that's actually the outcrop for the Burkeville Confining Unit. And then uh, the green there, that's that's the Jasper. So that's the outcrop area for the Jasper. Um, you know, as we know, a lot of a lot of the, the greater Houston area is covered by impervious cover. We've got a lot of you know um, concrete line channels and and a lot of uh, you know, 
modified channels that, that, are, that, that are intended to uh, you know, move water quickly. Um, a lot of that, a lot of the precipitation that we do get, um, you know, particularly when we get these really sort of you know, you know, big storms and heavy rainfalls, especially when they don't last for very long, a lot of that just goes out uh, uh, to overland flow into these channels and, and uh, really never makes its way into recharge anyway. Um, it's usually more the, the, the yeah. lighter rains that, that you know cover a longer time period. Uh, those help the recharge more generally um, than uh, than some of the more you know they, <laughs> you know summer rains. You know, I think we're pretty lucky that that area where you highlighted is a lot of that still forest and maybe state forest or national forest. So, so that we, but yeah. we do need to. We need to worry about that because if you pave and over it, it no longer yeah. is able to take that water in. And it is fairly it is fairly sandy in that area as well, so that helps. Right. There's there's generally right. uh, you know less clay content than there is you know in more of the Chico Evangeline, especially down dip closer to the coast. But I just yeah stress that it's when we read about Austin and and those water supplies, a lot of that's in I guess limestone caverns that are are just big caves that fill up when it rains. That's why they're so protective of the recharge area, but that's not what happens here. This takes a long time to get from from the re out, out crop until, until you pump it out of the ground here. Yeah, we've got um, you know previous reports where we've done some sampling and age dating and, and a lot of those, a lot of the wells in the region, I mean, that, that, that water is thousands of years old, so. Um, thousands, yeah. yeah, that's, I said that's an astounding number that it takes thousands of years to get down to where we are. Someone said, what do we do to raise the water levels? I think, well, I'll let you answer that, but I think the the blue and the red kind of show it that the areas that have stopped pumping or reduced their pumping, the, the uh, levels come up or stay the same, right? That correct statement? Of, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I think, yeah, that, I mean, it's, it's um, you know, reducing the amount of uh, groundwater that's used will, will certainly help that. Um, and in some cases, within a relatively, you know, relatively short time can help uh, raise, uh, rebound those water levels. Um, you know, I mean, it's, it's taken a, a fairly significant time, amount of time to um, get the water levels upwards uh, of this 150 and 200 feet of rise in parts of Harris County. Um, but, you know, once, the, once you start reducing groundwater usage, I mean, pretty quickly, you start seeing that recovery. So um, that's been the case in Harris County, certainly over, uh, you know, the historical time period. So, Right. And I think the, uh, like you said, area one, two, and three, and one was Galveston County and Southern Harris County. And you can certainly tell there, because I think they're down to like 10% groundwater. Yeah. That's right. The, that's their mandate. Yeah, I mean, I would say yeah, if anybody's you know for <laughs> more interest in that, definitely go check out uh, the Subsidence District's webpage. They've got some you know some nice stuff there that will you know provide some historical context and, and uh, you know help help uh, you know they have their groundwater reduction plans posted there and you know how the rates of subsidence have slowed over time with their instrumentation as well. So and, uh, anyway, I think that's a, a great resource to go check out. I have a question of why does Montgomery County not have compaction monitors similar to other counties? And I'm I'm not going to try to answer that. I do think we're in the process. We, several entities, are in the process of at least doing another one. Do you know anything about that in Montgomery uh, County? Yeah, I mean, I know there was some talk about it. I was, I'm not, um, um, you know, I was involved a little bit with it. Uh, our my previous supervisor John Ellis uh, was was in talks with several folks about that. So um, okay. yeah, I mean I think there's some interest in that. That'd be great if we we had that. We don't have our monitors there. I mean you know most of when our monitors were uh, put in, you know as, as, you, as you saw you know in the sort of 70s, most of them were put in in the, 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 the earlier mid 70s and, and 1980. Um, at that particular point in time, I think that's just you know, Houston and where those those monitors were, that's where most of the groundwater production was coming from during that time frame, um, and a lot of where the development was right during, during that time frame. I think there was just a little bit, there just wasn't quite as much going on in Montgomery County. 
the concern maybe wasn't there uh, the way it was, uh, you know, particularly for subsidence across, you know, Houston, the Houston area. So, uh, so I think a lot, a lot of it was just primarily for that reason. Yeah, and and I think uh, I do remember, you know, there, it is as far as subsidence goes. Uh, there are monitors that are all around. We have two or three in the Woodlands area, three or four actually. We have one in Kingwood. We have Conroe. We have one in Montgomery, Texas. So that that's by the Lone Star. Uh, I'm assuming they still read those, but that's, those are not, I guess they're called PAMs. Yeah. Very accessible. But they're looking yeah. at the subsidence too, or changes. They're just not extensometers. Yeah. This, so yeah, there's just a, a difference there in what's being, what's really being measured. Uh, the PAMs are the port of measure. Uh, um, they're basically G GPS units. Um, those are run by the Harris Galveston Subsidence District and University of Houston again. You can see all of that data there and where they are on their website. But the, the difference there in um, uh, those instruments versus our extensometers, uh, you know, our extensometers, as I kind of said, they're like deep uh, benchmarks. And so right. we're actually measuring compaction within the interval of land surface elevation and that uh, that extensometer anchor. Whereas the PAM sites are measuring yeah. subsidence; they're measuring total total land surface deformation. Um, and so and so there's you know, it's just a, a slight difference in terms of what we're actually measuring. So we can actually, what we're doing, we can actually determine some amount of where the compaction is occurring within the sub -sub subsurface sediments, whereas those PAM sites are just measuring total subsidence. Right. So I think, again, those are, and they, if you look at them, some have been in the ground for a long time over by yeah. Research Forest Drive, but they've been there. They do show the correspondence between pumpage and, and the, the change in elevation. And uh, some of them are fairly significant, obviously the ones that have been there the longest. Um, I, I'd point out that, and John, Geiger, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think our our goal as utility districts and the well operators here in the woodlands is to take 50% blend of 50% surface water from Lake Conroe and 50% groundwater. So when we maintain that level, we think we're doing the best we can. It does cost more, but it's something I, you know that the districts at this point feel are necessary. So I don't wanna to get too much into politics about it. Uh, obviously, you have pointed out one more time, you know, the, the changes, um, some of our significant changes, you know, I, it's hard to believe that attics is up to 3.82 feet. I mean, and that attics area is a Jersey village and places like that. And it's definitely, it also affects the floodplain. You, you know, the lower that surface gets the, uh, the more intrusion of surface water can come into it. Um, somebody named Maggie with their hand up, but I it can, if they would put it in a chat real fast, we can talk about that. Otherwise, one more time, I want to thank you very much, uh, Jason, for doing yeah, this. Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks for USGS again. I think that um, this is one of my favorite subjects because it's very straightforward. I guess you measure these with lasers and and uh, I guess even like tape measures or medical. You know. I'd, yeah, we're not that high tech. We we're using steel <laughs> st steel tape. It's it's still it's, using the steel tape. So steel and again, tape, but, I mean, they're as accurate as anything, really. You know, so. Uh, they they last fine and and you know. and as you pointed yeah. out, you uh, you do this in the winter time, yeah. basically because I guess we turn the wells off and try to let them rest a little bit before you measure that. And yeah, then, yeah. And then right. December January is the best time to to assume that you might have the best possibility possibility of turning them off while you do it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Well, I hope I haven't 
left anybody out. Um, again, this will probably be on on uh, recorded for future use. Uh, as soon as we can do that, I want to remind you again about Woodlands Landscaping Solutions, nine to twelve at Rod Fleming Park on Saturday. Be there, and then October the twenty sixth, Dr. Richard Gibbons with Texas Audubon is going to talk to us. Um, I think that's all we have. I really appreciate everybody taking the time and uh, their interest in this and just uh, keep it up. It's our water and we need to keep an eye on it. So thank you so much, Jason, and everybody else for being here. Absolutely. Thank you. Close her down, John. <laughs> thank you, Paul. Thank you, Jason. Thank you.